good morning today we'll be studying about the important dural folds and the important sinuses which are present in them so for that already we have done the dissection we have removed the brain also to see the different dural folds so uh, it's a dissected specimen but for just for the orientation i have kept it uh, like this so actually this is the vault of the skull which we have cut cut open so we have removed the vault of the skull so once after reflecting the vault of the skull what you see here so this is the dura mater so this entire thing what you seeing is the dura mater so within this dura mater the dural folds it will be modified into different shapes and there are sinuses which are present in them so what we have done is we have put one more incision here to reflect the dura mater to see the superior uh, sagittal sinus and the fox cerebri so actually in this region you will be having the superior sagittal sinus and what you are having over here so these are the arachnoid granulations so these are the arachnoid granulations so these are the from the arachnoid matter so these are extension into the superior sagittal sinus so the function is for the absorption of csf so now we have made two incision so and we have reflected the uh, dural fold so now what you are seeing here so this is the brain so the dural folds what you see there are four dural folds one is the fox cerebri so what you are having over here is the fox cerebri so this fox cerebri will be present in between two cerebral hemispheres so this is one cerebral hemisphere this is another cerebral hemisphere so between that the dural fold what you are having is the fox cerebri so this fox cerebri is a sickle shaped fold of dura mater so is a sickle shaped fold of dura mater so the anterior end so now we have already detached it so it will be attached to the crista gela so anterior end will be attached to the crista gela then posterior aspect of this fox cerebri will be attached over the tentorium cerebelli so this fox cerebri so now if you reflect this fox cerebri you can see it is having two margins so outer you can see it is a convex margin so this convex margin will be attached to the uh, sulcus uh, sulcus in the skull if you see for the superior sagittal sinus there is one sulcus so it will be attached to that and you can see one concave margin so this is a inner concave free margin so if you see this uh, the sinuses which are related to this fox cerebri are so here in this convex border you will be having the superior sagittal sinus so these sinuses are the veins which are present so here you will be having the superior sagittal sinus and here what you are having this concave border will be the inferior sagittal sinus then this posterior border of fox cerebri will be attached over the tentorium cerebelli so the tentorium cerebelli will separate the cerebrum from the cerebellum so this is the cerebellum this is the posterior part of the cerebrum that is the occipital lobe of the cerebrum so in between that will be the tentorium cerebelli which is present so for removal of the brain what we have done is we have cut to cut the tentorium cerebelli then only we can remove the brain so already we have cut we have removed the brain so so we have cut it over the tentorium cerebelli so that even the cerebellum will be intact then we have cut below the medulla oblongata also so we have cut and we have reflected the brain so now these dural folds what you are seeing so this is the fox cerebri anteriorly attached to the crista gela posteriorly you can see it is attached to the tentorium cerebelli so you can see this so on both sides so this is the tentorium cerebelli so what you have done is we have cut here in the tentorium cerebelli to reflect the uh, brain so the sinuses which are related to fox, uh, fox cerebri is of superior sagittal sinus then the inferior sagittal sinus then over this tentorium cerebelli where this fox cerebri posterior end is present so the sinus which is present over here so this will be the straight sinus so sinus which is present over here is a straight sinus then on the lateral aspect it continues as the transverse sinus on both sides it continues as the transverse sinus later the transverse sinus will continue as the sigmoid sinus 
then the sigmoid sinus will open into the jugular foramen the superior sagittal sinus will continue as the right transverse sinus which continues as the sigmoid sinus which will open into the jugular foramen whereas the inferior sagittal sinus will continue as straight sinus which will continue as the left transverse sinus that will continue as the sigmoid sinus to enter the jugular foramen so then then what you see is one more uh, dural fold what is seeing here the small dural fold this is also a sickle shaped fold of dura mater so this is the fox cerebelli so this was the fox cerebri this was tentorium cerebelli and this is the fox cerebelli so this fox cerebelli also anterior margin is free whereas posterior margin is attached so this fox cerebelli will separate on both sides you will have the cerebellum on both sides you are having this part of the brain that is the cerebellum so the fox cerebelli will be present in this region which is separating both parts of the cerebellum so the sinus which is related over here will be the occipital sinus then one more sinus what is present one more dural fold what is present is so here you uh, covering this so covering so here you will be having the pituitary gland so actually i have reflected the pituitary gland already for showing the students so surrounding this pituitary gland is the diaphragma cellae then the cavernous sinus which is related is on the sides so here you are having the cavernous sinus the, so the dural venous sinuses which is present over here will be the cavernous sinus so the sinuses what what you saw the main main dural folds what you saw was superior sagitt uh, 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 fox cerebri then this is the fox cerebelli tentorium cerebelli and the diaphragma cellae then the sinuses are superior sagittal sinus inferior sagittal sinus here you are having the transverse sinus then you are having sigmoid sinus so here will be the occipital sinus on in this region on over the petrous part of temporal bone you will be having the superior petrosal sinus superior petrosal sinus in re this region and here you are having the cavernous sinus so superior sagittal sinus Uh, will be continuing as the right transverse sinus which will continue as sigmoid sinus whereas inferior sagittal sinus will continue as straight sinus which will then be continued as left transverse sinus which will later continue as sigmo uh, sigmoid sinus then it will enter the jugular foramen so these are the dural folds and the important dural venous sinuses